Good morning everyone and welcome to the install bay. Today we have a special one for you. Well, aren't they all special? We're gonna show you how I build an amp rack with some amplifiers, power wire management, all that fun stuff on the show today. Stay tuned. So I get a lot of questions about my amp racks and the type of connectors we use and the loom that goes over them and the zip ties and the plastic that we, all the things. So what we thought we'd do today is film a video. We have a couple amplifiers we're putting in this Jetta over here. We have an audio control LC 1.800 and we have an audio control D6200. And they all have to fit into the trunk of this Jetta along with all the other stuff we're putting into it. But we're just going to concentrate on the amp rack today. Let's head over to the trunk and take a look. So there's not, I mean, there is a ton of room in this trunk, but not a ton that we can use for an amp rack, meaning he still wants to use all this. For this install, we're just putting one 12 inch ported box in the back because he wants to use this space he folds down his seats he slides stuff through so we don't have a lot of room to mount you know good 24 inches of amplifier so there's two options that we kicked around one was to make an amp rack and bolt it to the rear deck here they have these seatbelt restraint bolts that stick down and I was like yeah, that means I'm gonna have to come back far or it's gonna hang down and he's like well what if I you know I was like okay plan B was to mount them to the sides put one on this side one on this side and then we started looking at it a little bit and we were like, well, this is plastic. What if we make a new piece of plastic that goes out a little bit longer, curves down and mimics this. So you still have this cubby hole here, but we have the two amps mounted on the side. I mean, after all, this just lifts out. Yeah, after talking with the customer, he's like, yeah, that's cool, let's do that. So the game plan is to make a half inch piece of Centra, which is the blown PVC that we use. And we're going with half inch because we want something that's thicker and it's gonna be long, so thicker is better when you're doing long, for plastic anyways. We also have to make sure that the carpet that's not in it right now goes back in. So we have to come up with some form of a method to attach it to this side here. So we've gone ahead and we've already pulled out all the little clips that hold this thing in place we'll remove this back panel here and what we need to do is get this out oh we forgot a clip now the gas door is on this side of the vehicle it's right here in this area so it looks like there's some welding here and here so we have to figure out some form of a mounting method that we can screw into some metal to hold it in place because it is going to be heavy if you're just doing one amplifier you can do the sandwich where you slide something behind it you have the carpet you have the other panel it sandwiches the two together and because the trunk carpets are so rigid that will hold it in place but because we're going with the two amplifiers and those amplifiers are heavy we need something firm to mount it to so we're we're gonna have to crawl up underneath do a little bit of investigation and figure out what we can mount them to. If there's lip here, we might end up having to build a panel that comes down off the top here that we can screw into right here. Of course, there is a hole here that we can look through. Let me grab a light. All right, so if we stay somewhere in this area here, there's nothing here. There's stuff up here, but there's nothing that's like huge area. So what we might do is make a panel that screws across here, rivets in place, that we can then screw our panel to. Seeing how this is not level here, a panel, so that's what's weird, because it is level on the carpet. So what I'm thinking is, is where, we'll, where this piece is here, we'll go ahead and put some rivets in this, we'll screw our piece in place, and then we can put the carpet back in, we'll put our piece in place and screw back into that and that'll be what holds it. So we have a good game plan there as far as how we're gonna mount this. On this side, it'll just slide into that groove that's right there. We're just gonna make this same, same groove so that it'll just go right back into place and that'll hold that. But that's the beginnings of what we're gonna do. We really don't need to do much work in the trunk of the car yet. We're going to head over and we're going to cut out our piece of plastic for the carpet, get that all shaped and mocked up. We'll bring it back into the car and we'll figure out where that panel needs to go and we'll build that whole piece first. Once we have that built, then we can head over and we can actually start wiring up the amplifiers. Let's go ahead and put the amplifiers in place or about where we want them. 
and we can figure out how big we need to make this. We're going to have a zero gauge power wire coming to this along with all these speaker wires. We know we're gonna need some distance here to manage all that wiring. Because this angle is like such, what we need to do is move this way in order to get more distance on the bottom. Because the amplifiers would actually fit in this same height, but we won't have room to run the wires. Flip them upside down, that's just gonna look silly. This is about gonna give us what we need because we're also gonna have two distribution blocks that are going to go in here also. So then what we'll do is we'll taper this into the pocket. He'll still be able to get all his stuff that he puts behind there. Now what we need to do is take some measurements. 37 and a half inches, so we're gonna go from this corner here all the way to here because we want to go the whole distance of this panel here. We're gonna say 13 inches. So I'm gonna head over to the saw and get our basic shape cut out. We just need to copy this angle here. To do that, we have this guy right here. This is just a little angle copier so we can put this in the corner and get our angle. So when writing on black plastic, we use a white pencil. All right, I'm gonna just cut this off real quick. I'll be right back. There's a slight turn here, so we wanna go ahead and mimic that. We'll just go ahead and freehand that into place. So we have the front edge where we want it. Now what we need to do is bring this guy in to this corner here, cut this shape into place. But before we do that, we need to find out how far. So now we'll bring back our amplifiers, go ahead and stick them on here and trace out their shape onto our plastic. So this is where the amps are gonna sit. Now we can go ahead and trace this. And because we just don't want a straight cut right here, we'll add a little taper to it. So this is the area we want to remove. We also have a slight angle right here. It goes into this corner. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this off real quick, sand this out, and then we'll figure out how we're going to put the groove in it so that it will slide into place. Now to get our basic shape the way we want it, we're just taking some scrap plastic and double-sided taped it on. Now we'll go ahead and cut it on the router. That is the exact shape that we're looking for. Now we're gonna go ahead and router this thing, put a round over on the whole thing. So it took a moment to think about how we were gonna attach this end here, meaning create that groove that the factory had. And what we came up with is an eighth inch piece of ABS, which is exactly the thickness of the groove that is here, a piece of quarter inch ABS. We've contoured it to the same shape that we cut this. And now all we have to do is slide it into place, make sure it fits, and then we'll stick it onto here so that we can then go back and screw it into place. Now I've also screwed in the front part of this so that it lined up and was where we wanted it to be. And then we'll be done with this portion of it. We'll head back into the car and figure out how we're gonna attach this whole side into the car. So this middle area where we were hoping to drill in, it seems like there's maybe a half inch, definitely an inch or so up here. Six and a half by nine. So we wanna drill two holes in this area here, line it up straight with this top edge here. We'll go ahead and mark where we're gonna drill our holes. Now for this, we'll use a uni bit, which is a stepping drill bit. Now the holes have to be the size of these threaded rivet nut certs, whatever you wanna call them. Basically, they're gonna go in. We have this tool here that'll crush them into place and then it's a threaded inside so that we can put a screw into it. Now for all our threaded nut inserts, unless we're doing license plates, we use an M5 size. For this one, we're gonna use a tapered head screw so that it'll pull nice and flush with the plastic. So now what we want to do is go ahead and mount our panel into the piece of carpet like it's ready to go finished because what we want to do is drill our holes into this and what we're going to put on the back side of those are some lock nuts so that we can screw into this plastic. We marked here the lowest point where the amplifiers are going to be and then we also put two marks on the floor so we know where our area is. 
So the nut certs we're gonna use are just these cool guys right here. They screw in from the front, they have an Allen key, and then we can put an M5 screw into it. Make sure a screw threads in the bolt. You don't wanna get the panel all back in and then find out that you got a bum one. So this is the end of phase one. That is figuring out where we're gonna mount the amps and how we're gonna mount them. Now comes the fun part, wiring the things up and making them look pretty. The first thing you wanna do after you get to this point is get the amplifiers screwed into place. And when you're pushing two amplifiers together, always start in a corner, push them together like such, get all the points exactly lined up, and then go to the other corner and screw that one in. And then add in your other screws. At this point, I wanna look at the amplifier and check out all my dip switches. This has high level inputs that we're not gonna need, so I go ahead and remove those. We're not gonna be using the GTO sense on this. We're gonna turn that off. We're gonna make sure that the AccuBase is disabled. We're not gonna need that. We'll go ahead and turn our gains all the way down. Default on their crossover is 85 hertz. We'll just go ahead and leave that there. We are adding a base knob, and this is something that I always forget, so I just go ahead and plug in. And now we kinda have to figure out how this is all gonna go together. We have six inputs here, one output, and one input. We have zero gauge, we have four gauge, we have two distribution blocks, and we got a bunch of speaker wire. For distribution blocks, I'm gonna use this zero gauge T, and I'm gonna put a four gauge reducer in it to go off to this amplifier. For this install, we'll be using the Stinger 4000 series RCAs. Now it is marked front, rear, and sub on their little plastic pieces here, but typically when we wire it up, we lose those. We're going to put Put some shrink wrap on the ends here to mark what is what. We're gonna be using a white, gray, green, purple, just like wiring a radio. Now when you go to plug in the RCAs, untwist them so that the wires are all not bound in. So now that we've got more players on the board, I think I've come up with what I wanna do. I wanna mount these guys over here like this and have the wire come. And I'm gonna do a offset where I'm gonna raise one and keep one lower. So I'm gonna get some screws so I can screw this first one in place. Just wanna make sure that this top point here and this bottom point here line up. This is a ferrule here, and what it's designed to do is sleeve over the power wire like this so that you have a nice lug. We'll test fit it in the amp so we know how far we can go with our shrink wrap. We wanna pull this one in as much as a 90 as we can, and we're gonna have it turn into our distribution block. Cut this here. Now we have our piece of wire. We're gonna go ahead and put some braided sleeving on it, and we'll finish off the braided it's sleeving with some shrink wrap to cover up the ends and make it look like a finished product. Now all wire has a natural bend to it because of the roll. You don't wanna fight that if you can avoid it. Kind of figure out where the natural bend is on this because we have our logo on it. We want to go with that natural bend and have our logo up top. Now depending on what you wanna do with the wire is whether or not you should work with it when the heat shrink is hot or cold. You want that to not bunch up or get any wrinkles in it. Wait till it cools down a couple minutes or if you need it to bend, and work with it when it's hot. The other thing too is if you are using a logoed heat shrink, make sure they all go the same direction. When fastening the wire to the board, we use two different size zip ties. We use an eight inch, we use a four inch. For zero gauge, we're gonna use the eight inch because we need more strength than we'll get with the little four inch. We're gonna be manhandling this wire to get it to do what we wanna do. Depending on how you're planning to mount this, if it's gonna be mounted on a flat surface, you wanna have the zip tie locks on the top because they're gonna stick out an eighth of an inch on the bottom. The panel won't go flush up against something. In this case, we have a carpet barrier. Carpet will give a little bit, so we're gonna go ahead and put our locks on the bottom. Now, the other thing to keep in mind too, when you are putting your zip ties in, if you're gonna be stacking multiple zip ties, you wanna make sure that the lock all go in a way so that you don't have the lock 
stock in front of the hole that you're gonna run the next zip tie through so that you can continuously feed in the holes. The tool to have when working with zip ties is a flush cutter. This will go ahead and cut the zip tie flush with the lock. It's the best thing you'll ever buy. So next what we want to do is cut a piece of plastic the same shape so we can make a riser that's going to lift this off of here. Now we need our power wire to come in and attach the same way. However, it has to cross over the top of this or the bottom of this. So sometimes when you're doing this, it's kind of trial and error as far as what looks the best and how much work you have to do. The other thing is never get too attached to your zip ties. More than likely, you're gonna be cutting them off. have our zero gauge power wire now all set we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our four gauge power wire and how that's gonna run is we're gonna actually for this we're gonna start with the 12 volt first because we need that to come in close to this amplifier here and then loop out and plug in anytime we do a big waterproof style fuse holder that's a zero gauge it comes with four gauge reducers we keep those for when situations like this arise where we have to scale down to a four gauge from a zero gauge, just like in the fuse holder. Now these are those holes I was telling you about where you want to make sure that you have the lock in the right spot because we're gonna be putting two zip ties through the same hole. All right, now we'll do the same thing with the ground wire. So this is what I meant by making sure you line the locks up in place. They shared the center hole, so now if we drilled another hole here, the lock would go there and so on. Power side of the install is done. Yay. So now let's get back to wiring up the RCAs. So for this next step, we're gonna start at the farthest amplifier, which is the sub amp. When you're zip tying in like the base knob and the RCAs, often you have to unplug these things. So you wanna make sure that when you're putting in the zip tie, you leave enough slack to do that. Now, depending on where the amplifier is going is usually what helps me decide what I want to cover the RCAs in. Sometimes I like Tessa taping them, sometimes you use loom in this case where this is going to be on basically display in the trunk i'm going to leave the rca naked until i get to the choke point here and then from here forward i'll go ahead and cover that
So I've just taped the first two feet right now just so I can get this zip tie done and then we'll go back and we're gonna tape the whole thing. With the remote turn on plugged in, that completes the power side, the RCA side. The only thing I have left to do for signal is finish taping this up, which I'm gonna do right now. And then we're going to address the speaker side. Now, one of the things I always forget, which is kind of funny, is the subwire. I don't know why, it just, I forget it all the time. Starting with the subwire is probably the best course of action for me. We're going to use a 10 gauge subwire. So we'll go ahead, we'll grab some 10 gauge speaker wire, we'll put it in some braided loom, and put the ferrule ends on. Subwire is in. We went across the bottom with it because it is going to fold over into the car. Now we just have the front and rear speakers to tend with. We're going to, in this install, run wires to the kick panels and to the B pillars in the back for speakers. Now with audio control, they use these style inputs. It's not like the power or the sub here. They're really small. And I've seen people put ferrules in these. And sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should. And in this case, this is a situation where, yeah, sure, we have ferrules, but this style connector, ferrules really don't do that great in. They end up sticking out. I'm just not a big fan of them. The way this connector works is it, it has a top plate and a U. And as you tighten up, it, it brings the whole thing in. And if you have a wire in the middle of it, it becomes nice and tight. After doing several of these amplifiers and trying different methods, the old fashioned put the wire in and screw it down really is the best. All right, there again on these amplifiers, these unplug. So make sure you have some slack in the line so that you can unplug them. Now we want to come over this four gauge and this RCA before we make our turn. So we're gonna cut a piece of half inch this size here to give us a little riser for this to sit on and also to pull the wire over this way so we can get to our screw hole here, just like we did on the RCAs this way. So we still have access to both those screw holes. So now the amp rack is finally finished. Everything is cleaned off. The only thing we got left to do is run our zero gauge power into that, but we're gonna do that once we get it into the car. Quite frankly, carrying over 20 feet of loose zero gauge is a pain in the butt. But what we wanna do now is take this and attach it back to the piece of carpet so we can then get it into the car. So let's take a closer look at the amp rack. And then we'll also take a look at all the zip ties that are holding the wire in the back.
So the only thing I have left to do after I've run the wires is put the two screws in to lock it in place. But other than that, we're done. And this is what it looks like once it's in the car. If you notice the lip on the bottom right through here, this is where the carpet will go back into place. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little journey into the mind of Dean and the thought process that goes on when building an Amprac like this and running all those wires and wire management and things like that. If you guys enjoyed it, by all means, make sure you let us know in the comments. And if you're wondering where Fernando was, well, he had to take the day off, so that's why he wasn't in the video. I'm sure he's bummed that he had a day off. Anyways, as you like to say, on to the next one. You guys have a great day as always. We'll see you later. Bye.